my zone. Don't let me get in my zone. Don't let me get in my zone. I'm definitely in my zone. Hey, Grant Cardone here. News 96.5, you're in the Cardone Zone. Welcome. Hope you're doing well on this Sunday evening. Uh, Every week I come here to talk to you about your money, your finances, and your career. Tonight I'm going to be talking about ambition. And the reason why I want to talk to you about ambition is because clearly the greatest country on planet Earth, the United States of America, imagine this, the greatest country in the world is led by a bunch of idiots and buffoons called the Democrats and the Republicans that have clearly lost their ambition, clearly lost their purpose, clearly lost their clarity, I think, about what they're supposed to be doing, which is their public servants working for the United States to make this country even greater. And I'll tell you, the, the amazing thing to me is here we are, government sl- closed down, going on two weeks now. We're, we're getting re- ready to hit the deficit where they're going to have to raise the debt ceiling, which means there is no debt ceiling because they just keep raising it anyway. So what is that? that? That's no agreement. That's no commitment. That's nothing. And, you know, it's amazing to me how many Americans don't even care about this. It tells me that Americans have actually pretty much lost any kind of hope or faith in the leadership from Republicans and Democrats. Look, this is about Republicans and Democrats not leading, not being clear on their ambition, their purpose. And every week I come to you and say, look, man, this this whole economic thing is in your hands now. This is in your hands. If it's going to be, it's up to you and me. It's not up to them because they're clearly not going to do anything. And I come to you this week to talk to you about this concept of ambition. My friend Edwin Dearborn recently posted on his website, edwindearborn.com. He posted uh, the definition of ambition, which uh, I think uh, we have lost some sense of. It really hit home to me that, that this, this idea, what is ambition? And, and why do people not seem to have it? Why are so many people apathetic? Why are so many people not doing what they need to do in order to take care of their families and their business. Maybe you have employees that suffer from this lack of ambition. I'm sure they'll come up with a, that'll be a disease here in a couple couple of months by the pharmaceutical companies, lack of ambition syndrome, LAD, LAS, I guess, and they'll want to sell you some pills on it. Ambition, the the, the definition is a strong desire, desire, a strong desire to do or achieve something typically requiring determination and hard work. Desire for exertion or activity, energy. Notice it says typically requiring determination and hard work. I don't know about you, but I don't really want just to do hard work. I mean, that that sounds like digging a ditch, raking leaves, mowing a lawn. So I looked further into this, and and Edward Dearborn also provided this information, and I just thought it was brilliant. You know, when you look at what a word means, understand that the definition that you're getting out of the dictionary is today's term. And, and clearly, America has, is a much softer culture than it was 100 years ago when we were founded, 200 years ago when we were founded, okay? We're much softer. We're much more entitled. We're, much, uh, we're not nearly as aggressive. So I look up the derivation of this word ambition, and maybe I'll, I'll pop it up here. Ambition, Middle English. Now, r- Middle English, that time, just so you understand, uh, that is the year th- 1000 to about 1300. This is a thousand years ago when this word first started being used. At that time, it meant excessive desire, excessive desire for honor, power, or wealth. Today it means a strong desire. See, it's gone from excessive desire to just a strong desire to do or achieve something. Back a thousand years ago, you know, when, 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 look, man, when you, you got in a fight with somebody a thousand years ago, it was an ax in your head. Today it's, you'll probably be, get turned in for bullying. You know, you, you, you could get arrested. 
a thousand years ago, everything was different. Everything had a different meaning. Things were much more aggressive. You wanted something done. You had to, you had to, you know, literally travel by foot to get there. You planned three and four weeks at a time. I mean, people were strong. People were had their own legs. People were taking care of themselves. There was no entitlement. You didn't go sign up for something and people fed you, took care of you, babies, babied you. I, I was on the phone with one of my employees recently. He's like, I said, hey, what's going on? How you doing? What's happening? And he's like, man, I got a 20-year-old living with me. I said, what? My 20-year-old son's still living at, ha- at the house. And his girlfriend is staying at the house with us. I'm like, dude, the guy doesn't work? No, he doesn't have a job. He stays with us. Mama takes care of him, feeds him every meal. We're soft. Ambition. Middle English. 1,000 years ago, it meant excessive desire for honor, power, or wealth. Look, Cardone Zone, my name's Grant Cardone. I come to you every week to show you how to get your game on, your business face on, so you're winning in the marketplace. The middle class is getting crushed because it's lost its excessive desire for honor, power, or wealth. That was what that word meant a thousand years ago. There was no sugarcoating, no apologizing. You know, a thousand years ago, you didn't say, hey, I have an excessive desire for power and wealth. Okay, They didn't take you to court and sue you for that. They'd take you out back and kill you. They'd hang you. They'd, they'd hit you with an ax, but they didn't sue you. They didn't, there wasn't litigation and regulations. We weren't waiting for Democrats and Republicans to save our bacon. You went out and killed the pig, cut the pig to make your own bacon. Now what do we do? We go to the grocery store. Ambitious meant excessive desire for honor, power, or wealth. Now, why do I keep saying that? Because I want you to have an excessive desire. I want you. Can you imagine going into a public marketplace and saying, I have an excessive desire today in the 21st century. I have an excessive desire for power, wealth, and honor. People would hate you for that. They would hate you. No, today you got to cover it all up. You can't even say you're ambitious. You can't even hire or fire on ambition. And I'm, I'm going to suggest to you tonight that that's exactly what you need to start doing, hiring and firing on ambition. I don't need you to be smart. I need you to be ambitious. I don't need you to be a team player. I need you to be the leader of the team. I need you to do whatever it takes in order to get something done. Just imagine walking out today. Just do it. Go into your office today and say, I have an excessive desire for honor, power, and wealth. Okay, and imagine what your people are going to do. They're going to go crazy. But that's exactly what I'm suggesting to you that needs to be done, that you can use to grab market share, that you can use to make yourself better known. A lot of people today are acting like ambition is just having and showing desire. You think, hey, I'm ambitious because I showed up. No, I mean, showing up is a very, very important thing, but... Just showing up is not the only thing. You got to follow through. You got to be there. You got to do the dirty, the dirty stuff. You got to be willing to, you know, get your hands dirty and do what it takes to get the job done. Otherwise, it's just dreaming. Fifty percent of the kids getting out of college today can't get a job. Why? The ambition's gone. I want to throw something on Facebook. Post. I need a job. Anybody hiring out there? Dude, that's not ambition. That's crossing your fingers and hoping something happens. Throwing up a post to your company on Facebook once a week or once a day or tweeting something once in a while, that's not ambition. Let me tell you what excessive desire for honor, power, and wealth is. It's putting your last pennies out there to make sure your company's known. Excessive desire followed by excessive amounts of action. I write about this in the 10X rule. The 10X rule is about taking those massive levels of action to degrees that other people criticize and then actually hate you for. Miley Cyrus, perfect definition of excessive desire for honor, power, worth, value, money, success, celebrity. Is that too much? Well, I say to you, you know what? At least Miley believes in her product. You you know, the world sits back and criticizes Miley. That's just a form of spectating. And then she's got her fans. Oh, I love Miley. That is also a form of spectating. And then there's people like me saying, oh, I want to mimic, replicate, duplicate. I want to do what Miley's doing to get the kind of attention necessary, excessive amounts of attention. 
look, would your company be better off with excessive amounts of cash flow, excessive amounts of sales, excessive amounts of public media attention? Of course they would. The ambitious don't want. The ambitious don't want for anything. They demand for everything. See the difference? I want my employees to do this. Oh, I want my employees to do well. No, look, you need to demand what you want from your employees. You need to demand what you want from your kids. You need to demand your clients buy your products. The ambitious, they don't ask for anything. They insist on it. The salesperson in the sales organization that that is ambitious to the meaning a thousand years ago, excessive desire for, they don't sell their products. They make people buy their products. They make them. No, I refuse to leave without a signed order. See the difference? My name's Grant Cardone. You're in the Cardone Zone. On Twitter, you can find me at Grant Cardone. Every week I come to you with News 96.5 to talk about what you have to do to get to the next level. This show is about people, for people that aren't satisfied. If you're not satisfied, God bless you. If you know you have greater potential than what you are actually bringing home, Good for you. At least you're aware and know there's more. Remember, the ambitious, they want to have an excessive desire. The sales team that has an excessive de- desire will not sell products. They will demand people buy their products. They will do whatever is necessary, whatever follow-up, whatever persistence to make sure people buy their products and services. Look, without ambition, without ambition, what, what do you have? You know what you have? You have a company. You have a company. Okay, I have a gentleman right here. I have a book right here, Zebras and Cheetahs, by a guy named Coach Michael Burt. The guy's unbelievable. Uh, He was recently at a 10X seminar with me that I hosted right here with News 96.5 in Orlando. We had about 250 entrepreneurs, about 260 entrepreneurs there, looking for ways to take their game to the next level. Michael Burt is unbelievable. He wrote the book Zebras and Cheetahs. I have it with me right now. I have it marked. Uh, Loving the book. Michael Burt, you with me? I am. My Thanks friend. Th- hey, thank you so much for being here today. Uh, Michael, talk to me about I got about one minute before we go to break. Um, what, 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 is, what is your definition, Michael, of ambition? I think ambition is the, is the willingness to do, in your words, whatever it takes to manifest or create something that you currently do not possess or own. And, and it's this internal knowing, this internal drive, confidence that you can go have something that you can see in your mind. That's why Dennis Whaley always said, if you go there in your mind, you go there in your mind first before you go there in your body. And so if you can see it conceptually, that's a big difference between actually practically going and getting it. And that's ambition to me. It's going and getting what you see or visualize in your own mind. And, and do you think that, that people should want more? Absolutely. I I think like gravitates toward like. I think association breeds assimilation. Michael, hold that right there. Hold that. I'm going to come back to you. This is Grant Cardone. You're News 96.5. I got Michael Bird. I'm going to come back and talk to you about how to create that excessive desire for more that you need in your life. Stay with me. Did you check yours, though? What does that mean? The first 30 minutes? Everybody? Michael Burt, you there? Yes, sir. I'm here. Okay. We're live right now? Oh, yeah, yeah. Good, good. Michael Burt, brother. You're, I love you, man. I love you. Um, what, What's your website, Michael? I'm not. We're not back in the show yet, but I want to be sure I have your website. Sure. It's real simple. CoachBert.com. CoachBert.com. Okay. Yeah, and, and, and I'm showing your book right here. But, uh, I don't know if you can see the show, Zebras and Cheetahs. Okay. You can yes. see it? Yes. I how are we looking over here, good. brother? How how are we right. looking? I got right. a little more like hair Hollywood. than you. Huh? <laughs> you got a lot more hair, brother. I'm jealous. Okay. Did you enjoy the 10X seminar? I loved it. I've been on fire ever since. I haven't even slept since I've been back. I'm telling you, dude. Get some rest tonight, though, okay? <laughs> Recharge. All right, whenever you guys are ready, we'll go back in. Hold on, we got a sound problem, Michael. Sure. We have a sound problem for Michael or for the whole show?
Okay, hang on, Michael. Okay. You can hear Michael right now, right? Okay. Okay, let's roll. We'll have a little music, Michael, and then we'll be right back with you, buddy. Okay. News 96.5, Grant Cardone, you're in the Cardone zone. We're talking about ambition. How do you get ambition into your family? How do you get it into your office? How do you get it into your environment so that you're actually grabbing more of your market, more of your share, so that you're actually grabbing the things you want? I have Coach Michael Burt. You can find him at CoachBurt.com. He recently attended a 10X seminar with me down in Orlando, hosted by News 96.5. So, Coach, tell me, how do you get ambition into an organization? Well, I think it starts with the leader. You, you know, I think it starts with what we anticipate and expect. And when you come into our organization, you're going to know that you're going to get coached. You're going to know there's high expectations. You're going to know we're trying to 10x everything from day one that you walk in. When we interview you, you're going to be told those things. So what I'm really looking for, Grant, is, is core alignment. If these are part of my core values, I'm trying to align myself with other people who share those core values. Because when we've got problems is when I'm thinking one thing and our people are thinking something else. And so i got to know where you stand on ambition and, but, and how but, much you want to grow. Yeah, but Coach Burton, so, so how do you, okay, let's say there's a leader out there, a business owner, or CEO that wants that, or a team leader. But he's like, man, i just got a bunch of lazy people around me. Well, I think that's a culture issue. You know, anytime I go into a company and there's a bunch of lazy people with no expectation, that's a culture issue. You know, I'm working this morning with one of the top restaurants in Tennessee, maybe even the country, and I can tell you that they coach the, the heck out of these people. There's serious expectation. They run through a lot of people because they cannot cut it. If they're not ambitious, they don't fit. So, but the so people you, who are hungry for that come for it. Yeah, so you think, hey, man, it's all right to have turnover. Uh, absolutely. I think that uh, you're going to push people to a certain limit. And some people can go to that next level, and some people can't. And yeah, you, I, if you have to convince them, then they're not the right people. Yeah, Coach Bird, I totally agree with that. Hey, there's nothing wrong. I hear companies like, oh, got high turnover. That's not a problem. High turnover just says, I mean, unless they're quitting on you. See, I think, I think the company needs to know that it's okay to get rid of people that don't fit the culture, don't fit this excessive desire for more. Because there's too much of the marketplace and competition that's out, out there and like, we're just going to get whatever we get. And as long as the economy's good, we'll get our share. Rather than, no, dude, I gotta, I'm going to eat what I can kill. I know you talk about this in Cheetahs and Zebras. Zebras and Cheetahs, I'm sorry, man. Uh, I can't keep my animals straight. And, and you're talking about, uh, and, and you can, you know, I have your whole book just stickered up. Like, I love, courage means going first. It doesn't mean waiting, right? And I think that's what you're talking about with leadership and culture. Go ahead. Yeah, what I'm talking about in that book is is really in today's world, saturated and commoditized world, I'm looking for people that are zebras. I'm looking for people that look different. I'm looking for cheetahs who run faster, who pounce on opportunity, in your words, ten times faster. So so I'm looking. I can immediately spot a zebra immediately. When I was at your uh, seminar last week, I could spot zebras all around the room. Yeah, and, 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 and all- a zebra, a zebra is, is actually a very aggressive animal, right? Yes, and both of them, you, you know, they've got stripes, make them clearly distinguishable. You know, we're not looking for turtles. We're looking for cheetahs. We're looking for people who get out and create the news versus watch the news. And that's the ambitious people. And I think ambition comes from one of four places. I think it comes from purpose. I think it comes from mastery. You've got a strong desire to master. I think it comes from progress or autonomy. Those are four natural drivers. What, what, what are the last two again? Uh, progress and autonomy. Uh-huh. So these are four drivers of motivation, ambitious people. Lots of people are ambitious because of their past, lack programming, grew up with not anything. People told them they'd never be any good, and they have this burning desire to prove to the world they can become something. 
Yeah, and, 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 but let me just say, I, I also think that everybody has ambition. They're, they're doing something. Even the lazy guy, the guy that's playing games all day, he's ambitiously wasting time to that's avoid right. something else. You're listening to Grant Cardone on News 96.5 in the Cardone Zone. Coach Burt's with me. Coach, I don't know if you can stay with me. I'd love to have you. Sure, I can. Uh, we're going to take a break right now. When we come back, we're going to talk about startups. How do you get that ambition into your company? Or... How do you rework your company so you have ambition in it and you go out this week and just kill it? Stay with me. News 96.5, Grant Cardone. You're in the Cardone zone. You can find me on Twitter, at Grant Cardone. Every Sunday night, I come to you to talk about your money, your finances, your business, your career. Look, folks, if you want more, there's no like there's nobody keeping you from getting more. I'm going to tell you, there's fewer and fewer people going for more. A guy told me recently, I was doing this, a seminar with News 96.5 here in Orlando, and a guy's like, you know, man, I'd like to get more money, but the economy this and the economy that, and there's not a lot of money around and people aren't paying. I'm like, pal, there is no shortage of money on planet Earth, much less Orlando. There's no shortage of money in the state of Florida. There's no shortage, uh, shortage of money in the United States of America. There might be some countries where there's a shortage of money, but it's definitely not here. The truth is there's a shortage of people going for it. There's a shortage of people that actually demand that they get what they need in their life. Ambition. My friend Edwin Dearborn wrote on a beautiful article on ambition. All he did was define the word. A strong desire to do or achieve something typically requiring determination and hard work. That is the current modern definition. But if you go back a thousand years, a little trick I do is I always go back to the original derivation of a word. If you go back a thousand years and look up the word doctor, what it means today and what it meant a thousand years ago, a thousand years ago, doctor meant teacher. Now they don't teach you anything. What they do is they put you to sleep and they cut on you. If you go back to a thousand years ago and look up the word ambition, it doesn't mean a strong desire. It means an excessive desire for honor, power, or wealth. Imagine saying that today in a public place. It would be politically incorrect to stand out, to do a video and say, I demand excessive desire for honor, power, and wealth. You would have, like, can you imagine? I mean, look at the 1%, one, the 1%, one you know, revolutions that we had just a couple of years ago. I hate the 1%. The 1% are bad people. Anybody that wants excessive desire for honor, power, and wealth, folks, anybody that does not want that does not understand the value of more more. See, you basically have three choices in life. You're going to go for more, you're going to go for the same, or you're going to go for less. That's it. In life, there's only three choices. Your staff makes these three choices every day. More, same, or less. Or maybe maybe it's in your relationship. You've been in the relationship two or three or four years or 10 years or 20 years. More, same, or less. In your business, more, same, or less. That's the only three choices you have. Now, if you understand the real definition of ambition, then you would demand more. But it, the, the fact that most people are not going for more tells me they're going for either number two or number three, which is the less or the same. And let me just tell you that it is impossible in business to get the same. So I'm going to simplify this because I'm a simple guy. It's just got to be simple for me to execute. It's got to be simple for me and my business, okay? If it's not simple, I can't use it. Is this simple enough, a simple formula? You either want more, you want the less, or you want the same. Is that simple enough? Well, let me simplify it even further. You and your people either want more or less because the same is impossible. Same always results. The same, the same number of sales, the same number of clients, the same number of money, the same will always, always, always 
bring this to your office tomorrow, the same will always result in less. There is no such thing as anything ever staying the same. Even a dead body decomposes. Even a dead body decomposes. A flat line in business, we sold X number last month, and this month we sold X, or last quarter we did X, and this month we did X. Look, I don't care how big X is. If it's flat, it's dying. A flat line is reserved for death. Death is a flat line. The same does not exist. So your choice is this, more or less. I got Coach Michael Bird on with me. Am I being, Coach Bird, am I being like, you know, uh, politically incorrect here? One, that's one question. And number two, am I just being excess, excessive? I'm a greedy, excessive person. What do you think? You know, when, when, I, when I came back from your seminar, here's one big takeaway that I brought back to people in Tennessee. You don't use the word Miami, Orlando, Florida, California. You talk about planet Earth, is that there's so much more opportunity. And I hear so many people talk about in my city, in my, you don't know my market. I'm in a unique market. And when you, when you shift that to talk about planet Earth, 7 billion people, there is so much more opportunity. So I don't think you're being excessive at all. I think you're just getting people to their think is a lot bigger. That's why I go back to like gravitates toward like. That's why association breeds assimilation. We get around people who think bigger, we think bigger. We get around people who think smaller, we think smaller. Yeah, you know, look, for instance, you said like gravitates toward like, right? Uh-huh. And then, then I hear people talk about in relationships like, oh, man, opposites attract. Dude, I don't want to be with an opposite. No, no wonder no wonder 60% of all marriages fail. Two people getting together, they shouldn't have been together anyway. They were opposite, attracted. Let's see if we can change each other, get along. We, you know, we have a, do a little of this and this. And it's, it's, you know, it's all calamity and crisis and arguments. And they're like, oh, yeah, that's because we love each other. No, I want to be around like thinkers. And, and my question for you then is how do we get ambition into the organization so if I have 30 employees all uh, 29 of them are ambitious well I, th- I lost coach Burt right there okay so I'm gonna tell you how I would do it folks okay because there's a way first of all understand what excessive desire is understand the definition of ambition understand the definition of ambition it is an excessive desire for honor power wealth success sales to get more, to get that line, that graph going up, not down. There's nothing wrong with excessive. Nothing, okay? More is not a bad thing. More, it can only help you and your family and your business, okay? So when you're starting up a company, when you're starting up a company and you're like, hey, what are we going to go for here? More, same or less? Dude, I want to go for more. I don't want any of my partners settling for the same or, hey, we're a startup. I recently wrote an article for Entrepreneur Magazine, okay, entrepreneur.com. It's called Five Ways to Get Out of Startup Mode and Grow Your Business. They asked me to write this article. How do you get out of startup mode? How long are you going to be in startup mode? I know companies have been doing it for two years, and they're still talking about being a startup. Their sales pitch actually includes, you know, we're a small startup, Why are you calling yourself small and why are you calling yourself a startup? When do you finally grow up? Quit starting up. See, it's really about definitions and decisions. What are you going to be? How far will you push your people? Are you willing to fire people over a lack of ambition? Lazy people in your organization are a disease. They will disease the organization. I talk about this in the 10X rule and say, look, there's actually no such thing as lazy people. Lazy people are not actually lazy. They're allowed to be lazy. No one one is born lazy. If, if, If you have a kid under three years old, if you've ever had the experience of a kid one, two, three years old, they're not lazy. They might be tired, but they're not lazy. And if they're if they're acting lazy, the truth is they're probably sick. Lazy is encouraged and allowed by the organization. Lazy is something that is supported and educated in our culture where, where you know, teenagers get to go out and just hang out and text one another and do lazy stuff. Well, take their phones from them. Have them do something. Same thing with your employees. You're walking around, you walk by an office, and you see somebody jacking around, taking too long to fulfill a project. Start giving them timelines. You have four minutes to finish that project. 
push people, push them. That's an excessive desire for more. Coach Burke back with me? Yes, I am. So, so am I being uh, – is this too hard on people or is this good for people? I think it's good for people. I, I, I think people – you know, I think about being turned on to something by somebody. You asked me how to infiltrate this into your organization. I think people are turned on to something by somebody. And then, and then we get people in our organization that, that line up, that want to go do big things, that don't have small things. And so I don't think it's excessive at all. I actually think we need more of this because there's no classes in school. Uh, I went to college for nine years to get three degrees, and I had not one class on ambition. Yeah, yeah. They don't give you that fourth degree of massive action. That's right. That's right. So, so where do we get it from? If we don't get it, if we don't get it at home, you know, I've got a one-year-old daughter, and, and we read at night 10x, good to great, seven habits of highly effective people. We don't read Elmo. And, you know, I'm trying to put that in her. And when she wants something, I say, if you'll work hard to get it, then you can have it. You know, go get it. So if people don't have that from the parents, they got to get it from somewhere else because they're not going to get it in the schools. They're not going to get it in the schools. They're de- definitely not going to get it off of TV. They're not going to get it from, uh, I don't know what some of the hit shows are right now. I mean, Breaking Bad that's going to finish this season, that guy was ambitious. I mean, they're excessive ambition. Why? Because he's driven to try to provide for his family, even though this cat goes and sells meth. You know, he's basically a meth manufacturer. He is doing it. He is doing it under his own belief. Like, this is all I can do. I got three or four or five months to live, and I'm going to do it to, to take care of my family. I wouldn't suggest that. You were listening to Coach Michael Burt. Coach Burt, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. You can find Michael Burt at... CoachBert.com. The guy's worth following. His book right now out is Zebras and Cheetahs. Look different and stay agile to survive the business jungle. Thank you so much, Coach Burt. Thank you, Grant. Have a great day. So, folks, we're talking about ambition, okay? The original derivation meaning of the word was an excessive desire for honor, power, and wealth. I, I don't know what honor, power, and wealth means to you. I'm not big into the honor thing. I don't need honor. I really don't need honor, but... I mean, I think if I if I really look at the word honor, I had to look it up and see what it meant. It, it the people would have to know me before they honor me. If they don't know me, they can't honor me. But certainly, I want my daughter, my wife, I want my employees, I want my community and my friends to say, "Hey, man, Grant's an honorable guy. Grant's a good guy." I want to be known for somebody that takes care of his friends, his community, his mom, his dad, his brothers, sisters. If they need help, I want to be able to send help back home. I'm sure that's who you are. So honor, power. Power, do I want power? Absolutely, I want power. I want power in my cars. I want power in my phones. I want power in my computer. Anybody that says they don't want power, you're confused. So you mean you're going to go buy a computer and say, hey, I want a computer with the least amount of power as possible, okay? I want a car, and, and look, if we could keep this under about, you know, 35 horsepower, that would be better for me. I want to get a I want to get a range an oven range. I want to get a, a cooker uh, in my house, whatever that's called, what you cook on stovetop. And and by the way, I need it to stay on low heat always. No, dude, you want power, power, excessive desire for power, honor, and wealth. What's wrong with wealth? Wealth means an abundance of something. I want a wealth of customers. I want a wealth of time. I want a wealth of time. And Like I woke up this morning at 6 o'clock off to see the little girly, my two-year-old, because I need to spend more time with my second barn. I did that with my first barn, and I haven't been doing it with my second, Scarlet. So the last three days, I'm getting up earlier, even though my schedule's crazy. I'm saying, hey, I want excessive amounts of time, quality time, moments, love with this little one. And I can make the time to do it. And you can too. So, but you got, you got to understand what you're going for. Otherwise your organization, your organization is going to pull you, your people that are committed to nothing. Less, less is nothing. Less is a losing formula. They're going to pull you off your purpose. So this is what I would suggest to you to do, okay? Creating ambition. How do you create ambition? How do I actually create ambition? Oh, man, it was really painful that I wasn't spending time with my daughter, my my second barn. And I could see she didn't have as much affinity for me as my first one did because I wasn't investing time. So I got to clarify what's my purpose. The first step to creating ambition 
is what is my purpose? Man, my purpose is to be the best father to each of these children. My purpose is to be a successful businessman. I need money. My purpose is to help people with my products and my books and my audio programs and our online. My products is to enhance people's lives. Oh, that means I got I to gotta travel to San Francisco tonight on a, on a late flight and get in at midnight, 3 o'clock Florida time, 3 a.m. in the morning. Oh, what do I do? Do I suffer? Oh, yeah, my purpose. My purpose is to help. You got to clarify your purpose to have ambition. Purpose is the fuel. Purpose is the fuel to ambition. Purpose is the gas, the nitro, the stick. Number two, you got to tie it to what happens if you don't get it. Like, what if I don't spend time with this little girl? What if I don't have money to take care of my family? What if I don't make my products known? This is Grant Cardone, News 96.5. This is Cardone Zone on Twitter. You can follow me at, at Grant Cardone. Stay with me. I'm going to come back and finish the formula for creating ambition. I'm definitely in my zone. Uh, you guys on you guys on the on the on the stream out there in the universe. I got Sean Roberts. It's always the possibility that fires me up, not the guarantee. Sean Roberts, you can find him at S R A Tax. S R A Tax on Twitter. Coach Michael Bird on Twitter. Thank you, Michael Bird. Brittany, nothing is the same today. New day, whatever it takes. Atlas reclaim at Atlas reclaim innovation. He talks about innovation. Steve McGregor. Steve K. McGregor, only salesman in the company. I don't sell. We don't succeed. Fires me up 24-7. Hey, if you got a question you want to ask on Twitter, you can hit me at Grant Cardone. Just put your question there. Uh, Jason John thinks, yes, but what about ethics? Turning girls into whores isn't exactly a quality product. Miley Cyrus is not turning girls into whores. Okay? Understand what you're saying. Probably not a great example. Jay Z saying, "Hey, his coke, uh, you know, selling cocaine actually made him a better businessman." Yeah, I, I agree with that, dude. But here's the deal: Jason John thinks, "Dude, what are you doing to make sure girls know that Miley Cyrus is just getting attention for her brand or products, and that she's actually not being a whore? She's being a business person." What are you doing to make a difference? My, uh, my, my wife just walked in, and she's completely disagreeing with me. Susan Yonker, listening to you all the way from South Africa, Grant. Thank you. Brent Skinner retweeted me. Uh, Gandhi. Gandhi just tweeted me. Gandhi. Ola Kambada. Okay. Brock Patterson. Crown Motors. Joshua Smith. Bobbin Bari. Christopher Grigsby. Dude, you are on fire. Sherry Hamilton. Oki Mahardiki. I uh, appreciate you guys following me. This is Grant Cardone. You're in the Cardone Zone. We're going to go back for our last segment here. Damn, I just spit on my mic, too. Grant Cardone. Cardone Zone, News 96.5. We're right here talking to you about what you got to do to get your ambition on this week. Push your people. What you got to do to push your people to that. Imagine all your people having an excessive desire to win the game of business. Imagine that. Just imagine all your employees tomorrow morning having an excessive desire to get that extra client, to ring that register one more time. To make sure that internet sale, that internet lead converts. Imagine everybody in your internet department, in your call center, on your sales team, all the way to bookkeeping. Everyone interested in getting that one extra sale. That's the definition of ambition. Excessive desire for honor, power, and wealth. Success. Would that be good? Would that be good for the for the our economy? Would that be good for your family? Would that be good for your business? Would that be good for the morale of your people to know they're on the winning team? Oh my gosh, I'm getting excited listening to myself. You're listening to Grant Cardone, the Cardone Zone, News 96.5. How do you create this kind of ambition? Because the schools aren't. Politicians don't know anything about it. They only work one out of every three days. One out of every three days is what Congress works. 
and they earn 175000 a year and pay for nothing. There's not a congressman that pays for his lunch, his dinner, or his breakfast, or his ride to work. You pay for it. You want ambition? Number one, what is your purpose? Identify what is your purpose. I do this every morning. I write down what is my purpose in life. What am I trying to do here? Then I, then I, I don't worry about targeting just Orlando. I worry about blanketing planet Earth. My, my purpose is not to get everybody in Orlando to know me. My purpose is to get planet Earth to know me, and I, got, I lock up Orlando for sure. Number two, tied to what happens if I don't get it. If I don't get this, what happens? If I don't spend time with my two-year-old daughter, what happens? Oh, man, she could grow up to be like Miley Cyrus. Her dad must have not spent enough time with her. I don't know. She, she's she's going to grow up. I don't know how she's going to grow up, but, but I'll have regrets because I'll say, man, when she was two, you didn't spend enough time with her. That's painful enough. Maybe, maybe my daughter turns out bad anyway. At least I'll know. Hey, man, I spent those mornings with her, invested time and energy in that relationship. Tie it to what happens if you don't get that thing, that thing called ambition. And number three, hire and fire on ambition. Okay, I'm doing a TV show right now called Whatever It Takes. And I'm actually hiring people on their ambition, whatever it takes. Will you do whatever it takes? I don't care about your grades. I don't care about your resume. I don't care about your past. I care about are you willing to do whatever it takes? And then I'll fire you over not being, able to, not being willing to do whatever it takes. I recently created a program just for this. Uh, you can find it on our online site. It's about how to create motivation within your organization so that your individual, your team, your company has the ambition they need every day. When do I need ambition? When does your team need ambition? When do people need to get excited? When does your management team need to understand that it is the excessive desire for more and be able to find that from their phone, their tablet, their computer, on demand when you need ambition? We call it how to stay motivated. 30 days to permanent motivation. Your people need it, folks. They're not getting it from TV. They're not getting it from most of the radio shows out there. Hearing people argue about politics. Arguing about politics isn't going to get anybody ambitious. It's going to get them apathetic. They're not going to get it from the schools. I mean, face it. Do you even know how to handle people that aren't ambitious in your organization? Is the ambitious mindset what you want? Do you protect it? Do you know how to protect it? Do you know how to handle the other people that aren't committed? Man, I hope you get that on this week. Get that on this week. If you're in business, you need it. You need it. It's a competitive marketplace out there. It's a world marketplace out there. And if you don't go get more, you end up with one thing. You end up with less. This is Grant Cardone. Cardone Zone News 96.5. Have a great week. Be great because nothing else pays. And for my friends online, okay, let me just give you a little, a couple tips here, okay? Do you know what people sound like that have lost their ambition? Do you know what they sound like? This is what they sound like. They all sound the same. They have their own code. They have their own language. Dude, we never see you anymore. We never see you anymore, man. Dude, you work too hard. You need to relax, chill. You need to relax and chill. They'll, they'll say things like this. Will you ever be satisfied, Grant? Grant, when are you going to be satisfied? I hear this from people all the time. Immediately I know, oh, those are the people that are going for the same or less. Those are the people that have given up. And let me tell you, there's a lot of people that have given up. They have losses. They've been beat up. They've been hammered. They got bad grades in school. They hate schools. They just, they just given up a little bit. Okay. How about this? There's more to life than success and money. This is what those that have lost their ambition sound like. They're ambitiously trying to convince you to settle for less. Life is to be enjoyed, is what they sound like. You're never going to be a millionaire. Why bother? You're never going to get there. Why bother? I can't be a person who spends all their time working. I can't be with a person. This is a spouse, a girlfriend, boyfriend. I can't be with a person that spends all their time working. And by the way, who the hell do you think you are anyway, Polly? You think you're better than the rest of us? 
Look, as society becomes softer, more entitled, more civilized, civilized, you got to wonder about that. I wonder if we weren't better when we had axes and hatchets. Men and women start to make sense of being less ambitious. I don't want that for you, okay? I want you to be the father, the mother, the friend, the lover, the business person that is excessive desire for honor, power, and wealth. So me and you get to know each other. So you get to take care of your family. And so no matter what the government does from left or right, Democrats or Republicans, you know what your purpose is. You tie it to what happens if you don't get that. And number three, hire and fire on ambition. Take advantage of this pre-order on this set. Take advantage of this, okay? How to stay motivated. 30 days to permanent motivation. If you don't think motivation is valuable, then tell me what it's worth. What it costs your organization when they're not motivation, not motivated, okay? It's Grant Cardone. Thank you for following me. I appreciate it. Let me know if there's anything I can do to help. You can pick me up at Twitter on at Grant Cardone. God bless you and have a great week.